In late August 2005, a storm was born in the Atlantic, small, ordinary, and almost unnoticed. But within days, it would become one of the most powerful and destructive hurricanes in American history. Its name was Katrina. As it crossed the warm waters of the Gulf of Mexico, Katrina exploded in strength, a massive Category 5 hurricane with winds over 175 miles per hour. Satellite images showed a perfect white spiral, beautiful and terrifying. On August 29th, it made landfall near Louisiana as a Category 3 storm. Roofs were torn off, power lines snapped. But the true disaster wasn't the wind, it was what came after. New Orleans, a city built below sea level, depended on man-made levees to hold back the sea. When those levees failed, the ocean rushed in. Within hours, 80% of the city was underwater. Families climbed onto rooftops, waving for help. Hospitals went dark. Communication collapsed. The city of jazz and color became a silent ocean of debris. 1,392 people lost their lives. The damage exceeded $125 billion, one of the costliest storms in U.S. history. Investigators later found that much of the flooding came from engineering flaws in the federal storm protection system. The Army Corps of Engineers had designed it, but by law could not be held financially accountable. Government response was slow and chaotic. Officials resigned under pressure. But amidst the failure, there was light. The Coast Guard, volunteers, and everyday heroes who risked everything to save strangers. People shared food, rescued pets, carried the weak through the water, and refused to give up. Rebuilding took years. But from the ruins, New Orleans rose again, stronger, wiser, and forever changed. The name Katrina was retired, never to be used again. Because some storms leave scars too deep to repeat, this was Hurricane Katrina, the day New Orleans drowned and humanity rose.